Welcome. In this video, I will be summarising the rural topic in higher geography. The first part of this topic is about land degradation in either a rainforest or semi-arid area. In this video, I will focus on the semi-arid region option. However, you may have studied rainforests. The second part of the topic is focused on the UK and is about land use conflicts in either a glaciated or a coastal region. I'll be using the Cairngorms as a case study, but again, you may have studied different areas. You only need to know about conflicts in one type of landscape. Even if you have studied other options, this video will give you an idea about how much detail you need to go into to score high marks. We're going to start with some background information on the causes of land degradation. You won't be asked about this directly in your exam, but will help you to understand the impacts and solutions that we will study later. Land degradation means a loss in quality of the land surface. And in semi-arid regions, this is usually related to a loss of vegetation and soil. You must include reference to a named area you have studied and include specific examples from your area where possible. In this case, we're going to look at the Sahel, the region south of the Sahara Desert in Africa. Land degradation is usually related to a change in climate and or an increase in population leading to urbanization. A greater population to feed can lead to overgrazing and overcultivation, particularly when cash crops are introduced. This can take the land above its carrying capacity leading to a loss of nutrients in the soil. Deforestation, usually related to a need for firewood for cooking, also exposes the soil to erosion. Combined with increased wind, rainfall intensity and intense sunshine, this loss of nutrients and cover leads to the soil erosion associated with land degradation. Without trees and soil to hold in any moisture, Rainfall levels can decrease, leading to desertification and expansion of desert regions. A common exam question is to be asked to explain or discuss the impacts of land degradation. It will always give you the option of a semi-arid or rainforest area and you should choose the one that you have studied. In a semi-arid region like the Sahel, the impacts follow on from the loss of soil and vegetation mentioned earlier. Soil loss, because of rain splash breaking up soil particles, can produce scars on the landscape like rills and gullies. Wind erosion can remove smaller soil particles through suspension and saltation, leaving a rocky landscape behind. Both of these are more challenging to farm and will produce lower crop yields. Vegetation loss also reduces moisture held in the landscape and the resulting reduced precipitation causes an expansion of deserts such as the Sahara, which has expanded by about 10% in the last century. With less land to farm, more marginal lands need to be brought into production, again reducing yields. One of the staple crops in this region is maize, but lower yields coupled with drought can lead to starvation and malnutrition. This was particularly bad in Ethiopia in the 1980s and Sudan in the 1990s, but continues to this day with an estimated 35% of child deaths in the region related to malnutrition. Famine can lead to conflict, particularly when people are not happy with how their government has handled the crisis. Aid brought in will help in the short term but can result in a dependence and a collapse in the local economy. Faced with starvation and conflict, people are forced to migrate, leading to high numbers of internally displaced people, refugees and asylum seekers, putting greater pressure on the areas they move to. All of this can reduce access to education, impacting on the prospects for a whole generation. Recent data from the UN estimates there are over 1.5 million internally displaced people in the Sahel. By including named examples and statistics in your answer, 
you can demonstrate your understanding of your study area. But do not lose sight of the fact that these are real people trying to make their way in the world. Great improvements have been made in this part of the world. And for each of the strategies employed, you should be able to explain how they help solve the problem and evaluate how successful they've been. You may have studied other strategies, but this gives an idea about how much you need to cover. Improved farming techniques, like these shown here, help to reduce the impact on the landscape and can actually repair some of the damage previously done. One example is digets, sometimes known as stone lines. Excess stones are arranged in lines to create semi-permeable barriers that trap soil that would normally have been washed away by the annual rains. This method is easily shared with demonstrations. This is important in areas with low literacy and their construction brings the whole community together. Adoption is high because it is a more traditional method with very low initial cost and actually helps remove stones from agricultural land. You should be able to talk through a number of these farming methods, evaluating their success where possible. Other measures are intended to tackle deforestation. GECO stoves are much more efficient than cooking on open fires, and so their introduction can reduce demand for firewood, helping to preserve more of the valuable vegetation. By constructing locally using well-known techniques, they help to develop new industry and reduce the health issues caused by smoke inhalation. A much larger project is the Great Green Wall, a tree planting initiative planned to span the continent, costing an estimated $8 billion. It has helped to employ large numbers, especially women, planting drought resistant acacia trees. You should be able to discuss the positives that this is a symbol raising a lot of money internationally to combat desertification, but also the huge cost in relation to other techniques. You should have at least six different techniques to give you enough information, and you may want to research some of the other techniques here, making sure you can explain why they are being employed and how successful they have been. The second part of the rural topic is focused on the UK, and you will have studied a coastal or glaciated landscape. I'm going to look at the Cairngorms National Park, but you may have studied somewhere else. It is important to have a background understanding about the location you have studied, and I've included some information here about the Cairngorms. You need to understand that the National Park has a variety of different landowners, all with different agendas and ways of making a living. This can make managing any conflict of interest more challenging. Even the aims of national parks in Scotland can be conflicting. And in this case, they don't have equal weighting. Where there is a conflict between economic and environmental development, the latter will always take precedence, known as the Sanford principle. In this video, I will give examples of conflicts found in the national park. You may have studied other ones, but this will give you an idea about how much you need to write in an exam answer. One of the conflicts is centred around deer. Deer are free-ranging herding animals. It is estimated that there are more than 30,000 in the Cairngorms and they don't currently have any natural predators. They are an essential component of the ecosystem but problems can arise when their numbers exceed the carrying capacity of the landscape. You will need to be able to explain and discuss the conflict, identify strategies to deal with it, and comment on the effectiveness of those strategies. Essentially, the heart of the conflict is that landowners benefiting from deer stalking tend to want higher numbers, whereas landowners focused on conservation and woodland growth desire lower numbers. Because deer roam from one piece of land to another, this can cause problems. You should be able to explain the background to this conflict and the consequences for each side. When evaluating the solutions, you should be able to give specific examples and explain fully what those strategies are. In the case of deer, there are named examples, specific strategies 
and some positives and negatives to include in the evaluation. Another animal you might choose to focus on is the capercaillie. Focusing on a particular animal like this allows you to give specific reasons why they are at risk. In this case, nesting birds are particularly at risk of disturbance by walkers with dogs. Because of this, capercaillie don't nest within 125 metres of busy paths, cutting down even further the extent of their habitat. Often just raising awareness can make a big difference especially coupled with other strategies like habitat creation. Some examples of conflict involve the competing interests of different groups of users of the land. Anglers and paddlers can come into conflict on the River Spey. This can cause real anger and resentment and any way to improve communication and understanding can make a difference to how much people enjoy using the beautiful landscape. A code of conduct has encouraged users to be more considerate of each other and reduced the risk of disagreements and potential impacts on revenue. One common source of conflict is the presence of tourism in an area. Tourists are really important for the economy, but they can have a negative impact just because of their footfall, even if they don't mean to behave irresponsibly. For example, Footpath erosion due to hill walkers and mountain bikers can damage the fragile ecosystem, particularly on the mountain tops. It is a fine balance when putting in repairs between protecting the landscape from further damage and putting too much unnatural infrastructure into these wild spaces. This is a selection of exam questions from previous years. As you can see, some years have covered rural land degradation, some years have asked about land use conflicts, and in 2019 there were questions about both. You'll always be asked to talk about an area you have studied, so make sure that you know your case studies well and can include lots of specific, relevant details in your answers.